Howdy folks, it's Troy with V-Twins, the V8, I'm back with my engine building project. Now if you tuned in for the original um, version of this, was when I took the engine and I completely disassembled it for everything to go to the machine shop. So what's happened at this point is, I sent the block and the crank to the machine shop. <clears throat> After a little bit of further inspection, we had a couple of spots on one of the cylinders that was, uh, that was pitted from the engine sitting, so we ended up going oversized. We were already 30 thousandths oversized, so it had to be bored to the next size up. 40 wasn't going to get it because the pit was that deep, so we went to 60. So we got our block. It's been hot tanked, all cleaned, bored 60 thousandths over, over and honed to size. New cam bearings have been installed. New freeze plugs have been installed. Cleaned the whole block. I painted it black. I ran a tap through all of the holes in the block. Chased out all the holes, made sure everything was clean. Now I've taken the thing, I've blown it all out. I don't have anything going on with it. Uh, as far as any dirt goes, I've blown everything out. Everything's nice and clean. I'm gonna start my assembly. Behind you in the camera is the bench. I have everything laid out on the bench. I've got my crankshaft, my pistons, heads, cam, gear drive, gasket set. I have everything to put this engine together laid out nice and neatly on the bench and all accessible. I'm going to walk you through this whole assembly and in this segment what we're going to do is we're going to basically create what you call a short block which is the rotating assembly which is the crankshaft, connecting rods, pistons, rings. First thing that I want to do um, before we get really much further is I, I have a brand new melting oil pump here. I've mounted it on my rear main bearing cap and I'm going to set this set the oil pump height. So when you get your oil pump, it won't have your pickup tube and screen. What we're going to do is we're going to put this in here and we're going to set the height. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in here like this and I'm going to set this so it's really exaggerated like this. I'm going to take my oil pan, I'm going to set it down on here. When I do, it's going to squeeze down on my pickup and it's going to position it in such a way so it's like that. So, so when I take my pan back off, this position is going to be dead against the bottom of the pan. Once I do that, I'll take a measurement off of the block or the main bearing cap, someplace it's stationary, and I'll measure how far that is, I'll raise it up a quarter of an inch, we'll mark it, and that's where my pickup tube will go. So we're gonna go ahead and do that right now. I'm gonna pull this up here like this. I'm gonna grab my oil pin, which I have right over here on the side. I'm gonna go like that, get right down in there. Now I can feel my pickup hitting the pan. So I'm going to just kind of squeeze it down. Now my pan is firm against the block right now. So now I'm going to pick this up, and when I do, I don't want to hit my pickup tube and knock it out of alignment. And the next thing I want to do is I want to measure how high that is, and then I'm going to mark it and make it a quarter of an inch lower. So I'm going to take a machinist rule, I'm going to come off my main bearing cap, and see where I'm at here. So right now, I'm at five and a quarter, so I'm gonna move this down, so I'm at exactly five inches, and that's gonna put my pickup about a quarter of an inch off the bottom of the pan. I'm gonna come over here, and I'm gonna take my magic marker, my Sharpie, and I'm gonna make a mark on the oil pump, and I'm gonna make a mark on my pickup. I'll bring the camera over here, I'll show you what I've done. So now, what I've done is I've got this positioned where I want it and I've made a mark on my oil pump and my pickup. Now I know that's exactly where this needs to go. I'm gonna take this off and I'm gonna drive this thing home so it's all the way in there. Some guys weld them, I don't know, I've never had a problem with one. This one, as you can see right here, it's snug right now. This is a tapered fit in here. By the time you jam that, bury that all the way down, I think it's gonna be on there pretty tight. I don't think we're gonna to have to worry about it. So I'm not, I'm not gonna weld it. You have to take the whole pump apart to weld it because if you weld this with an electric welder, you have a chance on creating an arc in between the gears and it puts a marring on the gear. And then that can cause you problems later on. So we don't wanna do that. Okay, so that's our first step. I'm going to go ahead and take my oil pump off here, and I'm going to get my uh, my oil filter, my oil pickup driven down home, down solid like I showed you. Okay, what I did want to show you is how I actually did this. Um, so I set this on my bench, and I took a wrench, 
slid it over the tube where there's the flange. I supported it and I took a punch on my wrench and a, and a ball peen hammer and I knocked this on. I'll bring the camera over here. So here's your setup here. I mean, I did it by myself, but you know, I, I just supported it on a steel bench. I held this here like that and I took my punch and I put it on here and I tapped it. I tapped it on the other side. I tapped it on all the way around until I walked this all the way in so you can see it right now it's very deep we're lined up with our mark so now I can just slip my oil pan on make sure everything's all right now there's my oil pan it's on I'm not feeling any obstructions and we're good to go so now we've got our oil pump all set and ready to go I'm going to take and slip this off because the next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to take all these main bearing caps off and we're going to put the crankshaft in here and we're going to check the crankshaft and make sure it's true. I cut my, uh, all my bolts loose on all my main bearing caps. I got a soft blow hammer, it's a plastic hammer so it won't damage anything. While I got my bolts loose like this, I just whack these bolts a little bit I can walk my main bearing caps back and forth and take them off now these main bearing caps are all been numbered right from the factory so I don't really have to worry too too much about that um, but I did double check it on the disassembly so you want to make sure that um, you've got these all positioned where they're supposed to be my item numbered one two three four and then the oil main cap so I'm going to take all of these off lay them out on the bench in order okay so now we have all our main bearing caps off our block is upside down we're gonna set this crank in so we can check the crank to make sure it's true so what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up our bearing containers for our main bearings the only bearings we're gonna put in is number one and number five which is your your um, your thrust bearing your bearing. so the front and the back we're going to leave all the ones in the middle out. And the reason we're going to do that is we just want to spin it on those two. We're going to set up a dial indicator on this main uh, bearing journal in the very center. And we're going to turn the crank and we're going to watch that dial indicator. That's going to tell us that the crank is, is true. Um, there's a certain level of run out. I'll just have to take a quick look at the book. And um, it'll, it'll give us that spec. And then that way there we know our crank is true. Once we have that done, we'll take our crank back out. And then we can put the rest of our main bearings back in here and we can get to working on getting that fitted in here. So I've got my crankshaft ready to go. I got a can of fresh oil. I've got my bearings out. Now I, I rolled in this first bearing just to kind of give you an idea what it looks like. I'm going to bring the camera over. I'll show you the block and I'll show you the bearings. Here's our block. These are our oil fill oil pressure holes. So the oil from the oil pump travels through the crankshaft through these holes into the into the um, upper areas of the engine. So when you put your main bearing cap main bearings in, you want the ones with the oil holes to correspond with these holes in the block. You'll see how I put this one in. That's where the oil hole is. I got this indexed right there. I squeeze it down in there, and I got it flush here and here. I'm going to come over here. I'll show you all my bearings are laid out. You'll notice that the other bearing has no hole in it. That's the bottom bearing. Okay, you'll notice these have a groove and a hole. That's going to correspond with the upper part of the block. So I'm going to go ahead and put this one in. I'll do it with you. So I don't know if I can do this and hold the camera at the same time, but we're going to see. So you can see this little tang. What I like to do is get it lined up over here on this end and then roll it in with the tang like that and then I feel it make sure it's flush on both sides um, you can tap on this if you need to I don't like to I like to do this stuff with my fingers um, because you don't want to bang on this stuff because you don't want any kind of burring or marring or anything like that is gonna have a negative effect on your crankshaft uh, here's our crankshaft right here and as you can see crankshaft is marked uh, tens tens rods and mains okay Here's our bearing setup, and you'll see. notice that the last number here, see if I can get there for you so you can see it, is minus 10. That means 10 under. It's the same for our rods. Those are things you want to double check. We're going to put some oil in, on these bearings. We're going to take our crankshaft, and we're going to set it in here. 
Okay, I just wiped the crankshaft off. Everything I have is nice and clean. Squirting a little oil on the bearing and wiping it on there with my finger so they have a nice film of oil on that bearing. Now I'm gonna carry the crankshaft over there and all right, so this is heavy and you don't wanna bang into anything. Okay folks, so I'm back. I got the crankshaft settled down in here. I just had to wait a little, little bit and I just wanted to make sure I was in there right. So I've got it oiled, I got it laying in there. I checked it, made sure it's spun free and everything. So I have my dial indicator and I'm setting it up I got it all set up and everything so that you can see it. So basically what you're doing is the crankshaft is this long, main bearing is this long straight thing. So you're supporting it where it needs to be supported on either end. And then you're putting this dial indicator in the center and you're turning it and you're letting it ride on there almost like a needle would on a record. And then it's got this dial and it measures how much up and down it can go. So I've, obviously I've already looked at it and um, it's... I don't even have to look at the specs because it doesn't even move. I'm going to bring the camera over here and I'm going to show you the basic setup and the basic idea of what we're doing here. Basically what we're doing is we're checking for problems um, before we put the engine together. So the crank is sitting in this bearing here and it's sitting in our bearing back there. It's oiled up here and here. There's no bearings in any of these other mains. I got my dial indicator is on the block. It's sitting on the crank and we're at zero. Now I'm going to turn this crank and then you watch that that needle and we're going all the way around and I mean we're probably talking it looks like maybe a half a thousand pretty sweet in my book um, so there we go so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to take put my dial indicator away. I'm going to take my crankshaft back out. I'm going to put my main bearings back in. I'm going to wipe the crankshaft off. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to check some bearing clearances with a product called Plastic. Okay, folks, so I'm back. And what I've done is I've gone ahead and put my main bearing caps in the other uh, main bearing saddles. So I've got those. So I have all my main bearings in the block itself. Wiping down my crank, I'm going to take the crank and I'm going to set it in here. I'm not going to turn it. I've got it positioned so I have access to the most of my mains and so I have the best access. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the crank in here. Then I'm going to take main bearings, I'm going to put them in the caps. And uh, I'm going to wipe this crank down. We're going to take some plastic gauge. We're going to clamp these things down and we're going to check the bearing clearance with some plastic gauge. Plastic gauge is a little plastic material. It goes between the crankshaft and the bearing. You torque it to spec, and then you remove the bearing cap, and then you'll see the squeeze piece of plastic. You'll compare that with the, um, with the little marking tool on the side of the package, and it'll tell you what your actual bearing clearance is between the crankshaft and the bearing. And we want to make sure we're in spec before we completely assemble this. So that's going to be our next thing. Okay. Now I got it down in here. I'm going to bring the camera over and I'll show you what I mean by the positioning. Okay, you can see these big weights are going to get in the way of this particular bearing right here. But I have full access to the rear main, to this third one, to the second one, and the first one. So I can do these and then I can reposition my crankshaft and I can do this one here rather. At okay, so now we're going to put our bearing caps our bearings and our bearing caps. Okay folks, so I'm back. What I've done now is I've put all my main bearing halves in the block. I've wiped everything clear of any lubricant. I had laid some Vaseline in there, kind of wiped it over just to leave a very, very... I just don't like laying dry on dry, so I just put a skim coat of Vaseline, then I took a rag and wiped it off. I wiped everything off of the crank. Now I got the crank sitting in here. So what I'm going to do now is I've got my bearings in my main caps, and I've got my plastic gauge out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and cut my plastic gauge to the size of the bearing width. So first I'll show you the plastic gauge, show you what it looks like. Okay, so here we go. Our clearance is for this engine are going to be between two and three and a half thousandths on our mains. This is plastic gauge. It is a, um, a little tiny piece of plastic. You'll see it when I take it out of there. 
We're gonna lay it on the crankshaft. We're gonna put the main bearing cap on. We're gonna torque it to spec. We're gonna remove it. And we're gonna compare the squeeze piece of plastic to this gauge right here. And it will tell us what the actual clearance between the crankshaft and the bearing, also known as the oil, oil clearance is. So I'm gonna take this and it's inside of here, inside of this tube. So I'm gonna cut it and I'm gonna cut it to the, you know, relatively the size of this, of the width of the crank here. And I'm gonna lay it on there and then I'm gonna set the main bearing cap on and we're gonna, we're gonna torque it down and then we're gonna take a look at it and see what we got. Okay, so I've taken and I've cut my little thing to the width of the um, piece of plastic gauge to the width of the bearing. I uh, moistened up the top of the crank with a little bit of Vaseline so I can set my, um, my plastic gauge on there. I'm going to go ahead and set that right on there now. I'm going to get it on here so it's, so it's laying right on the top. It's important to have your plastic gauge on the top because that's going to give you the most accurate reading. So I'm going to bring the camera over. I'll show you once again. Kind of apologize. i got to kind of be the camera guy and everything. But um, if you zoom in, it's kind of hard to see because of the reflection. But let's see if I can get in or out. Ah, there you go. Now there's our little piece of plastic right there on top of the main bearing, on top of the uh, main journal. So what I'm going to do now is put my number one main bearing cap with the bearing in it on here, and then I'm going to snug it down, and then I'm going to torque it to spec, then we're going to remove it, we'll compare it to that gauge, and we'll see what our oil clearance is going to be. I like to put a little bit of oil on my, uh, on my bolts, so that when I tighten this down, I get an accurate, an accurate torque. You want to walk them down a little bit on each side until you get it snug. There you go. Now you want to switch over to your torque wrench. So now what I've done is I've decided that I'm just going to check all these things at one time. So what I've done is I put my plastic gauge on all my journals, put all my main caps on, and I snug them down just lightly with a ratchet. Now I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these down uh, to torque spec. Torque spec for the main bearings on a small block Chevy is 75 foot-pounds. I like to torque in three increments. So I'm gonna start by torquing at 30, then 60, then 75. I'm gonna start in the center and I'm gonna work out in a particular direction, front or back, doesn't matter. And uh, once that's done, we'll one by one remove these and take a look at what's, uh, what's going on. The reason that I decided to do them all was that way there I knew that the crank was torqued in place and I figured it was going to give me the most accurate reading. So here's my torque wrench. I'm set on 30. Got my center one. Now I'm going to increase this. I'm going to go up to 60. That's 60. Remember, I oiled these bolts so I get an accurate torque reading. So now we're at 60. Now I'm going to increase this to 75. Okay, now we're in. We're torqued down. Now I'm going to take a breaker bar and I'm going to loosen these and take them off one at a time and we'll take a look at our plastic gauge. So I got the number one off. You can see where it's squished. I'll get the little plastic gauge piece of paper and get the camera adjusted so that you can see. There we go. All right, so what you're seeing right here is the actual plastic gauge. Green piece of paper here, you'll see increments, and that's going to let us know what our uh, clearance is. And to me, that looks dead on two thousandths. All right, so our clearance is going to be two to three thousandths. Um, so we're definitely on the low side, which makes for a nice tight motor. I am going to systematically remove these and check them all, and I'll get all my plastic gauge on all the journals. Same process as I just explained to you. Lay it down on there, put your bearing cap on, torque it to spec. I did it in stages. 
I just kind of changed my approach and decided I'd do all of them at the same time. That way there the, the crank is completely seated and torqued down as it will run and all of these things look look great. Everything's at 2000s which is for a street engine 2000s is good. If you're going to run a high performance you know like crazy race engine or something they loosen them up a little bit to uh, two and a half sometimes even three thousands and the reason is is it's just the, there's no less break-in period and it's just a higher revving engine and they're not looking for longevity they're looking for that quick rock and roll no break-in time just go for it kind of high rpms so uh we're not we're looking to go the long haul here well that's the plan anyways so now i've got everything's plastic aged i know that my bearing clearance is 2000 i'm with in spec what i'm going to do now is i'm going to remove the crankshaft and uh i'm going to apply some assembly lube to the bearings in the crank we're going to put it in we're going to put all the main bearing caps back on we're going to torque it to spec and um then we're going to check the um the end play and at that point the crankshaft will be installed all right folks so i've got my crankshaft out uh and on the bench, what I did was I took a little bit of carburetor cleaner, I washed the crankshaft where the plastic gauge was and the corresponding main bearing caps where the plastic gauge was. So now I've got all my main bearing caps, uh, main bearing um, sleeves in here and I want to put my crankshaft in. But before I do that, I've got to put, the, put my main bearing, half of my main bearing seal here in the back. So I'm going to discuss that with you a little bit. I'm going to bring the camera over and show you what we look like. Okay, so here is the area where the main bearing seal would, half of the main bearing seal would go. It's the main bearing seal here. And if you look at it, okay, if you look at this seal, you'll notice that there's a lip facing outward, facing towards my thumb right now. That goes, the lip edge goes to the inside uh, to where you want to seal the oil from. So this is going to slide down in here like this, but you can't just go ahead and just jam it in there um, because you can tear it. So what we have here is we have this little tool and what happens is, is we take the seal and we put it in so it's flush on, on this one side and then it's not on the other side. This is almost, it almost works a little bit like a shoehorn. So this thing goes between the corner of the block and the seal, and you push this, i make it so you can see it. You push your seal down in here so it'll fit, and then you remove this. And then that way there, you don't, you don't have to worry about cutting your seal. And you'll notice that my lip is paint is pointed towards the inside. So now this is all set. I am gonna I am gonna do the same exact thing with my bearing half. I'm gonna put that the, the seal in that side. Okay, so now I've got my rear main seal in on my block. I've got my rear main seal on my rear main cap. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply some uh, I got some uh, comp cams, assembly lube, molly lube, you can use white lube, you can use all kinds of uh, lubricants. Some guys use Vaseline. Um, you can use motor oil, but the problem is is that you put motor oil on it, you put the thing together, and if it sits for any length of time, a lot of that will drain back out. This will stick there until you get oil pressure and get it running. Um, this way here, if you um, say you assemble the engine and let it sit for six months or whatever, when you go to start it up, everything will be fine. So I'm going to coat the crank, I'm going to coat my bearings, and um, I'm going to set my crank in here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that and get that all lubed up. I'll set the crank in, and then we'll, uh, we'll show you what's going on. Okay, so I've got my bearings coated with, uh, with assembly lube. I also coated my rear main seal with assembly lube, and I coated my crankshaft where the seal rides, and I coated my, my, my thrust area on the back of the crankshaft, this thrust ring. I'll show you what that is and we'll be talking about that in a moment. What you have is this surface, this surface of the crank right here rides in this groove and runs against this bearing. That's what sets the, the um, end play of the crank. So we're going to put this together. I'm going to, I'm going to lube up the other bearings. We're going to set all these bearing caps on. When I put this bearing cap here on, I'm going to put just a smidge of silicone sealant on the end of this seal on both sides so when this comes together there will just be just a smidge of sealant there just as a little precautionary so we don't have any leaks there. Alright folks I'm back I've got 
all of my main bearing caps on with them finger tight. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to do like we did with the plastic gauge. I'm just going to walk these down on either side and get them just, you know, basically just a little snug. You want to turn a little bit on one side, a little bit on the other side. You want to make sure you don't cock your main bearing caps. I'll put them on crooked. I'm going to work these down. All right, so now the next thing I want to do is I want to set my bearings on that thrust surface of the crankshaft. I'm going to turn the engine like this a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to place a hammer on the back of the crankshaft and I'm going to hit it with another hammer and that's going to jog those two bearings and make them flush. There we go. With any luck, Yep, that turns nice and easy. The next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to take our torque wrench and we're going to torque this back down to spec just like we did the first time. Torque spec 75, we're going to go 30, 60, and then 75 from the center out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we'll come back on and then the next thing that we'll be doing is setting up the dial indicator and we'll check our crankshaft end play. Okay folks, so I'm back. My crankshaft is in. Spins freely, everything's great. Now I'm going to check some end play. So what I've done is I've set up my dial indicator with the dial indicator on the nose of the crankshaft. Uh, put a little bit of pressure with a, with a uh, pry bar on the crank to pull it all the way back. Got my dial indicator set up and got it on zero. Then you pry your crank the opposite way and you look at your dial indicator. I'm going to bring the camera over so you can see the entire setup here. So this is the basic setup. So if you can look here, I'm at zero. I'm on the end of my crank. I'm pretty well perpendicular with everything. And um, so this is where I'm at here. I'm going to take and uh, pry my crankshaft forward. And there we go. I've got seven thousandths. The spec is six to ten thousandths. So I am uh, definitely within spec. I'm, once again, a little on the tighter side. My machine guy must like that. So at this point, I have end play in my crank. I've got my oil clearance set. My bearings are all torqued down. This crankshaft is in. I uh, appreciate you tuning into the video. You can get me on vtwins to vh.com, vtwins to vh.com on Facebook, and vtwins to vh.com eBay store. Uh, I sell buy and sell parts, I buy and sell cars, build engines obviously, Harley Davidson motorcycles, restore cars. Uh, if you need, I have a YouTube channel. If you have any questions, you're doing any projects, I, I pretty much do everything. I'm an ASC certified master tech in uh, mechanical and in collision, so I'm um, very well versed in paint and mechanical things, body work, all that stuff. So feel free to check out my other stuff. If you have any questions, uh, send me a message. I'll do my best to get back to you. Thank you very much. Have a great day.